happen for myself and my family there's no way that this is real man it can't be what is up everybody and welcome back to modify your love podcast where we have amazing people on this podcast every single week that been through their trials and tribulations and made it out on top yeah. is that an intro yeah that's an intro that is a freaking intro for us. For us. We need to remember that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a different intro every <laughs> I'm gonna single time. I'm going to write it down the whiteboard for you. Modify Frankie, welcome yeah. back. Hey, guys. Thanks. I'm glad that having you here was in our budget today. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what you're charging to be on this thing, on, my, on the podcast, but uh, I'm starting to think it's just becoming our podcast, and then we'll have a whole bunch of other people when you, you know you can't make it when you're traveling. Yeah. I have been traveling lately. You have. How's that been? I miss home because I'm a homebody. Yeah. Vegas. Vegas is home. It's home now. Because like when it? I went back, yeah, when I went back to, um, home to OC, even driving past like our old freeway exit, mm-hmm. I was like, feels foreign now. Yeah, no, I, I will always love California. Orange County, California has my heart. But at the same time, this is home and it's amazing. It's home now. Well, this you're my home. So wherever you're at, that's my home. So oh, you always say such so, so cheesy stuff. Oh I love God. it. But then when we're off camera, you hate me. Sure. Every, like, um, you built a fan base that. Loves me, but hates me. Yeah. No, I but I that. think I do treat you better in real life <clears throat> than on social media. No, you do. <laughs> well, this conversation, this podcast is going to hit home for a lot of people. It's going to be triggering. This is going to be triggering for a lot of people. This is going to have the other person be thinking a lot. This is going to have the other person be thinking a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. This is going to be a good conversation because this is what me and Francine have been through in our, our, our relationship uh, while well, I started my weight loss journey. I just want to get into it. I'm not sure if it's going to be a long podcast, but this would be good. So if you are listening right now, grab your tea, grab your coffee, get on your cardio machine and enjoy this conversation. Nice. You ready? Yeah. All right, cool. So one of the biggest questions we get asked, mm-hmm. both of us, is how we've made it this far in the weight loss journey uh, when you weren't prepared to lose weight. But the crazy thing is no one thinks that. No, they think well, that we've just been health as wealth together the entire time. Yeah, well, no, the people that follow you, the people that follow you, they 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 knew that they you talk about it like you're just doing this for the surgeries. <laughs> right. But they don't know like what really started this whole journey and that, yeah. you know, uh I started first. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I wanted to change my life around. I just had lost my grandpa. Um I did not live with Frankie for a very long time. She lived at the house, but it, I wasn't there. I lived with my grandparents. Mm-hmm. Um and when I got back home, I looked in the mirror. I was depressed. I had suicidal thoughts. And I was just disgusted with myself and the life I've created. And I just wasn't happy. Yep. Um, and ever since that first couple of days or the, the couple of days of me going through depression, um, I started getting my life together. And I started to work on myself. Um, and I started to realize that this is that was no longer the life that I wanted to live. And, you know, kind of getting fast forwarding a little bit. I you 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 didn't sign up for that relationship, did you? No, I signed up. Tell me up about for a relationship it. before wait before the weight loss. It was fun. <laughs> All we did was eat, go check out new restaurants. Korean barbecue like three times a week for sure. Yeah. As much as I say we were struggling Milky with buns. money, were we really struggling with money? Like how much money? We would literally go to Korean barbecue like three times a week. And that's thirty dollars, twenty five dollars a person plus tip. Back then, yeah. Now it's now like thirty like five. Yeah. Shout out to inflation. I think we would Not do more, but go out to eat way more when we had much less money. Yeah, that's it. Well, yeah. But it's expensive being fat. It was. Sorry, I'll cut that out. It was an interesting relationship because I feel that we built a relationship off of food. Mm -hmm. Do you you agree with that? Yeah. Because like I remember driving Uber, coming home at two or three in the morning and bringing you Taco Bell, us watching a Netflix show, falling asleep food on the side of the bed yeah not saying we were slobs but like we pick it up in the morning but yeah you know what I mean and then when we would go hang out it wouldn't be like let's go miniature golfing let's go bowling let's go skydiving it's like let's go to a dinner let's go to yeah. a restaurant and we would go on but then we lot. have catch 22 also because we like to go out a lot of places but we would also love to cook at home yeah which was equally <laughs> equally as unhealthy but delicious obviously yeah. we, we we it's never been a problem for us not eating out mm-hmm. but even the food we made at home were is equally high in calories because i yeah. you cook good Thanks. you i mean everyone knows you're a good cooker everyone knows you're the brains behind the modified macros what about baking oh you've you <laughs> me in the oven you in the oven need to throw you hands. turn you turn bacon 
into some type of out of this world type of hardness that I've never witnessed in my life. Like, I don't it understand how you, you disintegrated bacon. Like you put in 12 slices and, 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 and two came out <laughs> and they were burnt also. I had to throw away the baking tray. <laughs> you, you just made something so hard. You chipped my molar. You cost me a thousand dollars. You got that was a thousand dollar mess. One, I should not have been eating that food. Yeah. But two, you you turn things into rocks. You need to learn how to turn things into diamonds now. If we could get you to do that, you. I'm a, I was a diamond in the rough. Oh damn. Diamond in the rough, baby. But I have a question because the way you talk about our old relationship, it just makes me want to ask this, and I'm pretty sure people want to know, like, do you miss that old relationship? Not talking about. Yeah, the, you, the just in general, the eating, the going out. Do you miss that relationship or do you enjoy this lifestyle we have now? Mm, no, the only thing that makes me not miss it, but have like a little warm feeling when I think back is like when we had less responsibilities, we were just so innocent and just living life. Just doing whatever we paycheck wanted. To paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. Paycheck to paycheck. Feel like do that. we want to? Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, at the time, it's like, it's like when you're a kid and you're, you grow up uh, maybe not poor, but you know, with not as much money. Mm -hmm. But your parents don't allow you to know that. And you don't realize that you're poor, that you can't, your parents can't afford X, Y, and Z because that's just the life you're living. But everything was fun at the time. Like, I know some, I have some friends who, uh, you know, parents, is like, those lights got turned off because they didn't pay the bill and they're acting like a sleepover. It happened to me over. a few times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mom I know would light a stories. candle and see we were camping. Exactly. So it's like one of those things where we didn't really realize the life that we were living or the life we we're missing out on until we started making the change, um, which, you know, goes back into what, you know, we're talking about. <clears throat> when I decided to lose weight and I decided to work on myself, this was for no one but myself. This was not for my family. This was not for my friends. not for Francine. This was not for my mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters. No one. It generally started off for myself. I was the why because if I was not the why, then I wasn't going to work on myself and I wouldn't be here to help other people. And when I'm talking about other people, I'm not even knowing that I was going to become who I am today. I'm talking about be there for my, my sister who has a learning disability, my younger brother who looks up to me, mm -hmm. uh, my cousins, my aunts, uncles, <clears throat> everyone like that. So I was the why in the beginning. It wasn't anyone else. And that's why I always preach about it so much is like, you have to do this for you. Now, has my why changed over the time? Yes, my why has evolved into so much more than what I ever thought it would be. Yeah. But my original, my original thought was I was the why. Um, and how did you feel when I originally told you, like, when you, when, when you first seen that this was no joke, like, you seen it in my eyes, what was your thought about this? Were you, like, were you thinking, like, oh, here goes another diet yeah, we're going to do? Yeah, because for uh, our first half of our relationship, we were always on a diet. First half? The whole relationship. But, Because remember when we started no, dating, I was doing like MMA. it was, on and off, and then crash diets and all that, but we're always on a version of a diet, right? Yeah, yeah, very but true. But nothing That's, stuck. No, no, it was all... Take, 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 I think that's why I'm so against taking so much food. Like maybe I have like yeah. my own built up anger towards that, but it's so true because it it build, it builds an eating disorder by, mm -hmm. oh, I'm on a diet. Let me take away 90% of the food that I should be able to eat in moderation. Yeah. I think that's why I preach so much to my, my clients. Like, don't know, don't do that. Don't build an eating habit. Let's correct our eating habits. Remember, right? I wouldn't even eat chicken for a while because you didn't even want to season it. You only wanted it boiled or grilled, yeah. but nothing I on it. I went through that phase. So I for went a year, that. I didn't even eat chicken. No, we, I went through that phase of not even seasoning the food, like seasoning is too much. Well, I didn't know what I was doing, but I, I was trying. Mm -hmm. it, I look back and do I, look, do I feel stupid? A hundred percent. But I had to go through those dumb phases, I guess we could call it. Uh, in order for me to be where I am today, where I am a lot more knowledgeable. I am knowledgeable about nutrition. I mean, it's what I do for a living. When I realized, though, that you took it, it was, that it was different mm -hmm. was when, well, we were sharing the Jeep at the time. And you would say, like, no, I have to go to the gym at this exact time. And I'd be like, yeah. it's just the freaking gym. Like, you go anytime. You're like, no, it's my training. And then we would have arguments about it until I realized like it was really something you were passionate about. It wasn't just like a momentary thing. Yeah. And I remember I had that conversation with you and I'm like, I'm not going to bother you anymore about yeah. it. We, and and when, when she makes that seem so much easier than it was, but it was a while before you actually started respecting my weight loss. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what the hell? Where did I get this cough from? I don't drink caffeine after 11. Just a little sippy sip. Oh, but it tastes so good. <laughs> I love coffee now. Um, yeah, no, and, and you know, and it's, and I'm not mad at it because I, obviously how many times was I on a diet in the whole relationship where you probably became so jaded and I'm, I apologize for that. I'm sorry, <laughs> but at the end of the day, I was just trying to do what I knew, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, yeah. That just and you're always trying to bring me along for the journey. Well, you know, because, you know, as it's crazy and, and this is a whole nother podcast in its own, 
But you, in the beginning, like everyone called it out. You even called it out. My mom called it out. Like you weren't my type, but you were my type. Like mm -hmm. look wise, I guess we could say you were my type because I was pretty shallow. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like you were my type because like we just hit it off right away. You know, immediately. we immediately like right away. Like I didn't, I didn't look at you because, oh, she's not my type. So I'm not going to talk. Like I didn't notice your flaws. I just kind of liked being with you. And then you just so happen to think, oh, well, she's kind of chubby <laughs> after the fact or what? You know what? Or did it not exist? It, it didn't. It didn't exist to me, honestly. I, I I think that's how. No, I think I know that's how you. I know you're the one mm -hmm. because I didn't like. Even when I look back, old photos. Like when I look back, I'm like, damn. damn. Like you look like that. I didn't see that, babe. I did not see that. I promise you. Like if I would have seen that, I would have said something. And who am I, six hundred pound guy, <laughs> telling you something, right? But you know me. You already know how I love am. Bubbles, I would be like, right? look it, look it, look it. This is the pot calling the kettle black. Okay. Yeah. You got to do something about your weight. And I'm over here, six hundred pounds. But no, I, I didn't see that. Like I generally, you know, I, I loved you for you. Um, and we're so different. But we're so much alike. So different. But I think that's like something that I think is why our relationship works. Also going on with this conversation we had is that I think that's why our relationship works is because where I'm, my flaws are your strong points and my strong points are your and vice versa. Did I just yeah. mix that up? Dyslexic no. came out. Did I got that right? Yeah. Can't make fun of me now. <laughs> um, And I think that's what it is. And I think that's why we're so successful in our relationship. Not perfect. Mm -mm. And you, we're going to get into a story of not being perfect, but also think one of the best stories uh, best things we could have done for this relationship. Yeah, um, and but it could have been make or break for sure. And I was prepared for that, which sucked. So I love the heck out of my girlfriend, uh, and I've always loved her. And we've always we've we grew we've built a lot with each other. Uh, we built a lot of calorie intake. We built <laughs> we built a lot of memories. We did a lot of stuff. Uh, and getting into my weight loss journey, and when I started my weight loss journey, and the first red flag in the weight loss journey was actually from my family and your family when mm -hmm. they were telling you. Um, you better start losing weight because he's going to leave you for someone skinny. That yeah. bothered me a lot. That re I didn't like that. Like, I didn't mm -hmm. think it was funny at all. Like I, uh, in I've the beginning, I didn't, um, I didn't take it serious, but I kept hearing it so much. And like the, like just even like how you said from my side and your side, it was like just the pre repetitiveness of it made it, it like that. if it was real, it was funny. Like the first couple of times I think it was, you know, cause I'm a, I'm a jokester. Like our number one argument in a relationship is I mess around with you too much. Yeah. Um. But after a while, I started getting annoyed, and it just reminded me of like every single time, like someone would have a sly remark about my weight mm -hmm. and about this, and like we we both we both knew we were overweight. Yeah. And I I I like I said, I was doing this for myself. So when I got into it and I started losing weight, I lost over a hundred pounds, and I was like, look, I need to make sure I take this serious. Got into the gastric sleeve, waited what three weeks. Then I was in the gym, wasting no time. And they Head told down you and, two months. They told me two months. Good luck. I was no. <laughs> Uh, and that's not even to go into the eight months later where I'm eating freaking whole bunch of rice and chicken. And stretched to, to, your whole stomach to, up again. Yeah, it was a whole effort to eat the food that I could eat I now. But scared. that's I, I was ready. How did so? How did okay? So the first, what was like your cue in your head that you had to start losing weight? Uh, when you joked about fitting into my pajamas and you did. Oh, you were serious about that? Yeah, I did put your pajamas. That was on. my trigger. I also have a bigger booty than you though. Mm -hmm. I make up for the lack of yours. And I took a picture of your butt earlier. You did. You look you did. pretty cakey. Thank you. Thank you. I work hard on this thing, honestly. Dump truck. One of my, my big, big best assets. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Assets. Right um, but yeah, so that was it, huh? Me putting your clothes. So it's like, because you were so used to like this big ass teddy bear. Mm -hmm. You're hot. Even That's so, then. You know what? And it might be that I'm so jaded to life i guess i can't take compliments so when you tell me that and i think about my old self i had confidence and, and i still love myself but like hearing you say like that like in looking back how i looked like i can't really take it serious even though you i know you mean it yeah it's just but like, you would tell me oh but before i lost weight you didn't hug up on me that much you didn't touch me that much but then i go back and find like old snapchats and i'm like yeah i mean you but wrong. that's on social media I, i'm just saying i'm not saying you love me any less or any more if anything i'm saying you love me more you know, but I feel that since I lost weight, I started getting some muscles. You, you know, you, you grow up a little bit more, you know, you little you touchy, touchy. I'm, I want to fatten you up more. I'm, I'm, you do, you do want to do that. I know you do for sure that you want the old lifestyle back. You want to talk about two in the morning. I, that's why you can't be trusted. That's why I, don't, I watch you make my meal preps. Make sure you're not adding oil. Um, but no, and, and it's not even a bad thing. It's not even a dig at you. Like mm -hmm. I just, I just feel, I just feel that way. Now, maybe I'm wrong and maybe whatever it is, who we're both, let's agree to disagree. That's mm -hmm. how we built our relationship. Um, on that <laughs> agreeing to disagree a lot of times. Um, 
but yeah, I feel feel like since I lost weight that you, you know touch on me a little bit more. But hey, it's not a bad thing. It's touch whatever. But I can't really take that compliment when you're like, oh, you're so beautiful or you're so good looking when you're big. Because like I didn't see that version of myself like at all. Like but I, I always I, told you that I had confidence, but it was like fake confidence. It was like my family gives me confidence, but outside confidence, it was I think it was at an all time low. Mm-hmm. Um, you would always hype me up though for sure. Like I've never take that from you. Um, and then your cue to lose weight was me fitting your clothes and kind of talk to him, talk to everyone about about that feeling, uh, me wearing your clothes and then the steps you took moving forward. I felt fear because then it made all of the outside noise of you better lose weight or else he's going to leave you like it made it so much real because I obviously knew I was big, right? I was 300 pounds, but Damn. I wasn't the fat girlfriend. You were the fat boyfriend. Oh, I was your comfort blanket? I guess in a sense. That's r- No, I'm just kidding. I get that. No. I, I know and there's then, plenty of people hung out with me because they're like, I'll never get as big as AJ. <laughs> huh, look at you now. Look at True. me. No, just kidding. But, uh, Actually, kind of not kidding. But you So know. No, there was a lot of fear and I was very reckless mm-hmm. right after. So it was right before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm going to get I'm going to get uh, weight loss surgery, too. Uh, I booked it for, I believe it was like May 24th yeah. of 2020. And then they shut down because of you the pandemic. Were, remember how many arguments we got in? You were so mad at me for that. And I didn't yeah. do anything. But I, I know why. Like, you were like in a panic. Like, yeah. you have to get the surgery because this is going to be the fix all for and you. And they this said is elective surgeries life. were canceled, canceled until further notice. And then I kept you calling so every mad. day until they rescheduled me for July. And I'm When thinking, she says every day, let me see. Francine is persistent. I get my she way. She gets her way. Yeah. I never, and I love it because it works to our advantage a lot, mm-hmm. but it also doesn't work to our advantage a lot when it comes to something you're persistent about me getting done. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like one of those things that sucks, but I, I like, I love that about you. Like you say something like you get it done. You, yeah. There's no BS. Now the new friend scene, the old friend scene, she was persistent about the weight loss surgery, but like other things that we kind of let slide. But you know, we, you know, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. You are a nine but to five no worker. Way, now even, you're a business owner. True. But even when, uh, they did program my my surgery. They said, okay, well, we can do your surgery July, I believe it was like 20th, but you can't have anyone inside yeah, no the hospital. Yeah, no one could be there. No one could do and anything. And I said, you, that's fine. You were okay with just not letting me go. And it was I was my not first okay surgery of any kind. I think that's like the only time in, that I'll be 100% honest with obviously myself and everyone listening is that like I'm a I'm one-sided. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, was, is it one sided or is it, is it, was it like a not macho man? Cause I'm not no, macho you, man. No, you are one sided because if the, if, oh yeah, the tables are turned, turned I would go. You would have been I, like, oh, I'm fine. I feel like because I know that I could protect myself and I feel like even then, and I'm still going to now, like, I feel like, I feel like girls don't get it, a lot of respect. I feel like, especially, you know, but really I demand it. It's very true. But and I use knowing Spanish true. to my advantage in Mexico when I pretend that I don't know Spanish. Yeah. But I'm talking about just. It's just more of the guy. Like, you know what really brought this to light and made me know that I'm not crazy and overprotective is tacos. Because when I would do one event, you would do one event, you would have people talk to you disrespectful at the end of the day and you would tell me mm-hmm. and guys be rude. And when I'm there, not one person, there was one person talk to you rude and, it, and that was it. We did tacos for three plus years. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's well, what I kind of brought to light of like people, and, and not just saying every guy's like this, because I'm not like that, but yeah. I'm just saying, I'm going off of our experience. Like, I don't like you to do things by yourself because I feel like, you just don't you don't get enough I, I if i how i look at it is like if i don't talk to you a certain way if i don't tell you a certain thing if i don't whatever it is like no one's gonna do that to you well when we did tacos i would let it slide because i would think about my business not me yeah yeah but i just didn't like it i just feel like guys just get but catch little, me outside this tent damn catch me outside <laughs> uh okay so you and you were a hundred percent ready for me to just not be there and i was like nope yeah. negative soldier so i you got your way I, yeah i told I, I had a name drop you did oh wait that's right they knew who i was mm-hmm. and they the said making as long of heavy as to I modified. Didn't post about it until after mm. it was a no promo or anything it was like please don't post that like that he's here because no one's allowed to have uh anyone <laughs> there so it had to be on the hush hush i like i had like five hundred thousand followers at that time that's yeah, crazy. It worked that to worked. My That's advantage. cool. It worked. I've name dropped you a couple times to my advantage. Yeah, I had a name. I had a name drop too on that. I'm not gonna say the brand of that company, which I love their brand. I literally would promote that for free because we use it every day. Mm-hmm. And they messed up. And I feel like they only sent it on time is because I feel like they only sent it on time because they I, I hit them for my Instagram them? or my assistant emailed them. Shout out to Carlo, even though I'm not talking right now. I don't know how long we're not gonna talk for. I'll update everyone next week, but I'm not talking to my best friend still. Um. But yeah, so you got your surgery. Yeah. All right. And what happened? It was horrible. You hated it. 
Yeah. Why though? Please let everyone know out there because I know there's a lot of people that are going to be listening to this that are going to be curious to know how we've had this relationship work for so long, but also mm-hmm. too that might be interested in weight loss surgery. Um, yeah. And everyone thinks it's a fix all. The number one comment I get: "You had surgery, you didn't put in the work." <laughs> okay. Go do it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so, anyways, let them know how your mindset was when you were not prepared. Mm -hmm. When you didn't take the time and the effort and learn the knowledge and learn about your body and learn about your bad habits, let them know how that weight loss surgery affected you. Okay. But I do want to say one thing before that is the reason why this is all on me. The reason why I chose to do Mexico was not only because it was cheaper, but it's because I didn't have to go through the process of being approved for surgery. Yeah. But now being on the other side, I do see the value and the importance of if you do want to do weight loss surgery to do those classes because they teach you, I guess, to some degree, which is better than what I got, is, you know, that your relationship has to change with food and mentally um, how hard it is. Because I actually don't agree with you. you they don't? don't do enough schooling. At, they don't do enough at all. They, but I they give you They give you like a like a like a, a month month program. Um, and then they give you, then you go straight to your pre-op. Like I feel no, they give you therapy too. They make, oh yeah. Some people to make you go to therapy. Yeah. Right. But I still don't think that's enough. Like I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like I don't, I don't feel that's enough. But like that it opposed takes to what time. I did. Very true. Now that yeah. I do agree with, but just, I feel like you're hyping the, 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 them up too much to like, oh yeah, don't go to med to go. Uh, you're going to get schooling from the place in the States or whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with either one. I go, go, go to the place that saves the money, but you take the time mm-hmm. to learn nutrition. You take the time to figure out what your bad habits are or not. If you don't want to take the time, then find someone and pay someone that's going to help you break those bad habits. It's been through the story that's been through the walk uh, before. And you know, that's why I feel, I feel like you're just hyping up like down here. So I would go save the money. No, if you're going to have to pay for it anyways down here, it's just, I'm saying because they, you actually have to do these things here and over yeah. there you don't. Yeah, that's where me and Francine's mind. We don't agree with a lot of stuff. Go out there. If you want the surgery, you go out there and you take initiative and you learn about those bad habits. You learn why you spend years and years of overeating and you start mm-hmm. breaking those bad habits before you even get to that surgery. And you are going to be successful because at the end of the day, that surgery is not a fix all. It's that not. surgery is a tool and it's going to be a tool for about six to eight. It'll be a tool for four or five years, but it's only going to be that realistic tool for six to eight months. And then after that, yeah. you're on your own. Yeah, because as soon as I hit my one year mark, I had lost 80 something pounds. And then within like a month and a half, I'd gained like almost 20. Almost back. 20. Uh, and I didn't even notice you gained 20. You were you were terrified to tell me that, right? Yeah. Yeah. You didn't want to tell me that, which leads into the big conversation. You know what I mean? Because, you know, we didn't we're not even talking about what happened behind the scenes and, and nor what happened behind the scenes even mattered about the Steve Harvey show and all that stuff that, that we're talking about pure relationship. Mm-hmm. This is my rock. This is someone that I've been to for, with for 10 plus years who was would had a faith in me when I was 400 300 400 400 500 600 pounds uh always believed in everything I did and the big reason why I'm the main reason why I'm on YouTube I was on YouTube before all the weight loss stuff Mm -hmm. and I noticed that she wasn't taking it serious anymore I noticed that she was just sitting there uh and she would eat everything the same again but it was just smaller servings and I would get so frustrated I remember we got into we how many arguments did we get in because you would always have me go in fast food lines and I didn't want to eat anything a lot. I wouldn't. I got to the point where I was like, "Don't ever ask me to go through fast food line for you." I I gave up for Starbucks. I said, "That's cool, Starbucks. Your drinks." But are you totally said fine. If there but can't be more than three cars. Yeah, I'm not doing it. I'm. Not, <laughs> I don't like fast food lines. I still don't like. Oh, I'm okay with Starbucks. That's something you enjoy. But any other fast food, I will not do it. I have like a PTSD with fast food. I just. I did. I still do. I don't. I feel like I've wasted so much. Like I said, Starbucks is only. It's only fine. I, I do Starbucks. Not only and not saying I'm not saying I never eat fast too. food though. Let me just say that I. I don't want anyone to ever think that I don't eat fast food anymore. Um, but I just don't. I don't eat it a lot. And when I do, I just feel like crap, and I don't like it. And I feel like it gives me body dysmorphia a bit more. So I stay away from it. You know. But I remember. I remember. Let me go on and call you out, Miss Frank. Frank. I remember you was mm-hmm. still. Go get fast food and try to hide it from me, but you would mess up and forget rappers in the car. Yeah. And I ain't talking about rappers who like rap. I'm talking about like fast food rappers. Like the game? I, you, I blocked the game. <laughs> I blocked them. Uh, <coughs> yeah. I actually started eating fast food after weight loss surgery, probably like a month and a half after. Frankie. Yeah. Are you serious? Uh-huh. Are you serious? I thought I caught on to you months later. You were doing it a month after? Mm hmm. 
See, it's that mindset, right? It's that mindset. It just, it's not a fix all. It's, it's literally. I couldn't even finish the burger. So if I would go for like, say McDonald's for breakfast, I would get like a McGriddle. Uh-huh. And well, that like early. Eat every 30 minutes? Yeah. So two <laughs> bites would make me full. I love you. And it'd get me mad because I'm like, oh, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to faint. Did you regret <laughs> having the skinny. surgery? Yes. In that moment. <laughs> she didn't yeah. even think about it. Okay. Okay. And, and, and I love to share this because this is two separate sides of this, just the weight loss journey in a whole, mm-hmm. right? And like I said before earlier, you didn't sign up for this boyfriend. You didn't sign up for this type of relationship. And I feel that you had the surgery just because, well, I know you had the surgery just because I was losing weight and I was starting to get a little bit more attention and you didn't like that. Mm-hmm. And you also liked that I was a fat boyfriend and you were the smaller girlfriend. Yeah. Rude, but I respect it. But I will, I digress. I will say... And anyone that knows me for a long time can back me up that I've always been a chubby chaser. But it wasn't because I, I, I wasn't wanted chubby. someone I was to thick. be bigger than me. I was thick. I wasn't chubby. I was thick. But thick. But thick is hot. That's right. Big boys. It's big boy summer, you know? That's hot boy summer. The hoochie daddy shorts. Look at those. Sheesh. Got the hoochie daddy, daddy shorts on. Okay. And then you start, you gain weight. And then you didn't tell me, but I started noticing. I think my grandma called you out too, which that's so rude. But I mean, grandma, grandma, grandma does not hold back. No grandmas do. No grandmas do. Yeah. Especially my grandmas. Like they are like, uh, they are so overprotective with me, but I love it. It really sets a high standard for you the way you have to treat me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, okay. Yeah. So you started gaining weight and then obviously, you know, fast forward a couple, I think it was like a couple, a couple years later, a year later, two years later, when we have the conversation. Last September. Oh, so it was years later. Cause mm-hmm. I've been, yeah, yeah. So, okay. You're fast four years later. Yeah. You were, you, you were kind of 50, 50. I was half I, I, it. For sure. Half, but I and was, I was a, using PCOS. Once again, wait, I was using PCOS as a crutch. That was yeah, my, yeah. that was my yeah. excuse for everything. That was definitely your excuse so for everything. I, like, and I didn't try? know. And that's where you messed up because I had to learn a lot about PCOS. I Cause I really, I will, I wasn't even an online coach yet. I wasn't mm-hmm. even a personal trainer. Just my no, girlfriend. You were doing personal training. No, I'm talking about before, like when you first started using PCOS for everything. Oh, we started okay, doing yeah, the studies yeah. and stuff. Um, we started looking up research. I started following that guy that uh, about PCOS. Like I was really into it because, you know, I didn't think it was an excuse at the time. Um, now, PCOS does make it hard to lose weight. Um, but at the same time, it's still not impossible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as I got to learn more about PCOS and I got to, you know, cause my girl had a problem, you had a problem and I wanted to help you. I wanted to help you so much because I wanted you to experience what I'm experiencing because I know for a very long time in our relationship, roughly around two or three years of our relationship, I still was going out and having fun with friends and you didn't want to go because of you were insecure about how you looked. Yeah. And I didn't know that until recently, but you know, now that I, that I knew, well, when I, when I found that out, like, obviously I don't want you to be like, that. I don't. Like you're a beautiful person inside and out, you know, at the same time, I want you to have the same confidence I have because, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's the only way to live like with the confidence and obviously I may have too much confidence, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, And then, you know, fast forward, it uh, was a year and a half ago now with that conversation. No, it was last September. It was last September. You just told me that. Shows how much I pay attention. Dyslexic. I am. No, that's my excuse. I'm a dyslexic and have ADHD. Um, anyways, a lot of successful people have that. Yeah. So. I had to have a conversation with my girlfriend. Um, after a while, I was doing everything I said I was doing. I was setting goals. I was never satisfied. Now, with this being said, she was supporting every single step of the way. She did not slow me down at all. And when she realized that social media was actually doing something for us, like you doubled down on everything. Uh, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I was doing everything that I possibly could to help you. <clears throat> I was just my own train wreck. Uh, behind closed doors yeah i did it's not that i loved you any less it's not that i didn't i wasn't sexually attracted to you it was that i was no longer attracted to like the lifestyle that you wanted to live Mm -hmm. right because i'm so i am very terrified of gaining weight again that life i live was so uncomfortable and i know you love the hell out of me and i know you support the heck out of me and everything i do but i'm talking about me right now Mm -hmm. i was not happy i felt when i went i felt being the fat boyfriend like i generally felt being the fat everywhere i went I was always the biggest person in the room. It Everywhere. was convenient for me, though, because I could always find you quickly in a very, crowd. Very, very true. 
Very, very true. Thank you for being selfish and making sure that you find me in a I crowd. I was at the casinos. Now I hate it because yeah, you look yeah, like I blend anyone. Everyone. Thanks yeah. for calling. Now you call me basic. Now it's too big. Now I'm basic. <laughs> Amazing. I love this relationship. Uh, but no, like I felt being the biggest person in the room. I, I felt it everywhere I went. I could be right. I could be wrong. Nine times out of ten, I'm mostly right because about this because everyone judges someone. And mm -hmm. if someone 600 pounds do. walks in, exactly. I, yeah. So I'm not even mad at them for judging me, right? It just, I felt it. I felt the eyes on me everywhere I went, and I got so sick and tired of it, and I just didn't like it. I got so, it just so was annoying. I am terrified of being overweight again. Was People that why you are, were so cool, though? Because you're like, I'm going to give them something to look at? If yeah, they're you know, staring? they're already staring. I'm, I'm going to show flex up and show out, bit. you know, flex a little bit, whatever. But I, it was a, it was a Band-Aid. Mm -hmm. Because how rough was I at that weight? I always had something to prove. You were very cutthroat, too. Cutthroat. Very cutthroat, very unhappy, very, you know just mean sometimes and it's just because i was unhappy with my decisions that i made right and that's no one else's fault no one should have to suffer because of the decisions that i made but, you know, but it's, it's easier it to lash out on people it's not yeah. the right thing to do no. but i get it because i done especially it. knowing what i know now and doing what i do now and, and learning what i've learned now i was so unhappy mm -hmm. but i wouldn't know it unless i was that person and now i'm this person i know i'm unhappy that person was um so leads into the conversation that we had to have. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought about this for like two or three weeks. So anyone out there listening that's thinking about, oh, maybe I have to have this conversation, think about this. Because you have to be okay with both sides of the answer. And you have to deliver it You properly. have to deliver it properly, especially if you're still in love. I was still in love with Francine having this conversation. I'm still in love with her now. So I didn't want to break up. I wanted her by my side. I didn't. No one can relive or redo or rebuild what me and Francine have built over the last 10 years. No one could do that from the loss of my grandpa to the businesses to learning stuff to memories, everything. I don't want to do anything. I told you already, if we broke up, well, we're going to have to figure out how to be co-friends. Co still together. Still together. <laughs> like, I'll fly your new boyfriend out with us when we got stuff to do for business or whatever. But I, 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 you know, I trust you. You know yeah. what I mean, it, it's very hard to trust people nowadays. We're, we're going through, you know, I mean, we're going through our own stuff right now, trusting people mm -hmm. or, you know, thinking that whatever it is. I won't. I'll digress. Anyways. Digress. So I had to have a conversation and I talked to the one person first that I knew you would not be mad that I talked to. Mm -hmm. And everyone's going to listen to this. It's like, oh my gosh, I have a girl best friend. Yeah. And then Francine and Carla both hate me the same. And they actually get along very, very well. Um, but we're so overprotective with you at oh, the same time. I love it. I do. Only I, we I, got can best of, I got best of both worlds, honestly. It's expensive when you girls go out because not one you guys pull out your debit card. Not she is one. a sugar best friend though. No, she's no, she's solid. She's one hundred percent solid. She knows like I said, I'm what's not gonna talking happen to her when you now, tell her to go to Target. Yeah, she knows she's gonna buy me something. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have a girl best friend, and that's the only person I felt that Francine would be okay with me talking to about. I also needed a girl's input, mm -hmm. so talking to Daniel or anyone else like that would have not got me anywhere because you know I maybe Daniel would have had your back actually. But I had to think about this and I had to have a talk with Francine to let her know that the lifestyle that she's continuing to live is not something that I want to live. Um, I'm terrified of gaining weight again. I'm terrified of living that lifestyle, but I also do not want to hold Francine back from living a life that she wants to live. If she wants to eat hot Cheetos every day and, you know, just a smaller portion and, and, and not go to the, not, not care about her health or whatever it is, not calling you out. But like, if that's what you want to do, that's totally fine. That's what you wanted to do. And I had to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that. I want you by my side forever. But at the same time, my goals, your non-negotiable. Yeah. My nine, my nine, my negotiable. What? My non non-negotiables. Non <laughs> my non-negotiables changed. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. That was a tough one. I'll keep that in. Um, and so I had to talk to Carla and I let her know how I was feeling and, and let her know that I was still in love with you and I don't want to break up with you, but the heavy to modified brand has grown into something that, you know, we didn't even know what it was going to be. And, it's and it now, came with a lot of responsibility. It came with a lot of responsibility very, very fast, I feel. It was a lot of hard work, but when I say fast, I mean like I posted up a video and next thing you know, I'm here right now. That's how I feel. But there was so much in between that. Um, and I had to have a conversation with her. I, I had it. I told, you know, I told Carla that I was like, hey, like, this is how I'm feeling. You know, Francine's not really caring about her health. And like, I have a brand and like, how am I going to help people if I can't help my own girlfriend mm -hmm. who lives with me every single day? But I also understood that that's not a life that you signed up for. I understand that 100 percent. And um, there was no nice way of saying it, but I feel like I did a good job. Yeah. So I, you know, I talked to Carla. I finally just, you know what, I'm going to have a conversation. So came home one day and I sat down and I was like, hey, we have to talk. Nothing bad. Like, I, I don't, because I feel like everyone says to talk to you, they'll break so I'm up. Like, oh, you know what I mean? Cheated. Yeah, no, no, that's <laughs> not me. Um, and I told her, I was like, hey, like, I love you and I want you to be with me as we continue to grow into whatever heavy to modify to continue to grow into. But 
the lifestyle you're living is not for me anymore. And I see that you enjoy what you do and you kind of don't focus on the new, your nutrition and stuff like that. Or you don't like the gym. That's totally fine. But like for me, like I'm changing and I feel like it's, I'm, I'm not, I feel, I know that I'm changing for the better because look what it's turned into and it's not even done growing. And you said, this is where I'm going and mm-hmm. I would like for you to come with me. 100%. How, how was your initial reaction when I told you that? Cause that's probably something hard petrified. to hear. It was hard for me to say it. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna lie. And you're pretty violent when you get mad at me. Like not really, I've never but like hit you. you. Maybe I'm just kidding. Not never, never. But I'm just saying though. Like you are like pretty spicy. Like you're you're you are spicy. Like you are like a hot tamale. Like, like zero to a thousand or everything. But the everything's like zero, or the nothing's like zero. But the everything's like the a hell. thousand. Yeah. Like I'm going to end you. Right. No violent thing. Just you know, you just very spicy. Yeah. Very Latina. Um, and how was that? Like first, yeah, like how was that? I was petrified. Yeah. Did you think it was over? <sighs> no, because the way you delivered the message came out of love. So it didn't lead me to believe like that you were saying something, but meaning something else. Like I, because you're very direct. Hmm. Yeah, I do. I probably myself on that one. But I was really scared because... You were not asking me to do something that I wasn't already telling you that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it also made me feel guilty. Yeah. Damn. I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. And And I thought about a lot of stuff before I said (laughs) it, but I didn't think about that. It also, it it did make me like a little scared to be like, dang, like I could really lose him. But Mm -hmm. not to say that I need you because I don't need you. And Damn, vice, no, chill, and vice versa, right? Dog? We don't need each other. But in in my mind, like if I didn't create or build life with you, then I wouldn't want it with anyone else because I prefer to be by myself. I just choose to to share my life with you. Yeah, no, you are one hundred percent. Yeah, and you will be successful with or without me, well, especially same. Yeah, yeah, vice but versa. But th- that people were like, "Wait, that was so rude." No, like, that's we both agree with each other that. We don't need each other, but we def- we want each other, and we mm-hmm. are in love with each other, and we want to grow with each other. But I don't ever want you to need me. I always I want you to want me, but I don't want you to need me as you are a, a strong, independent woman. Mm-hmm. And it's been proven time and time again that people don't even know what you do behind the scenes, but I do. And it is, and you are a complete one eighty to who you once were, and from your from your upbringing to your to what people told you you can and can't do, and everything. Oh my Wait, gosh! Now you make the most money probably in your family. You know, Possibly, mean? You, yeah. you know, whatever it is. And I'm proud of you for that. And your money's not everything, but money is a sign of how much hard work you put into something. You know what I mean? That's a good way to see it. So I, I'm, I'm proud of you. <laughs> yeah. You love spending mine, though. Yeah. Yeah. You swipe. I'm so scared that your, gr- your sister's coming. Your girlfriend. You have a girlfriend. Your uh, sister's coming out this weekend. And I'm terrified because you guys are about to go ham. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Um, But yeah, getting into it. Back into it. Um. So what was your initial, like, what was, what, what did you, what did you really want to tell me? Other than what you actually told me. Like, did you think about breaking up with me? Did you think about just like ending it? Because maybe that's in life. I want to know. I, I'm, I'm no, I break didn't. it. Let it break it down. I didn't. I wasn't upset with you. I was a little bit sad, but not. Not about what you told me, but it. But what you told me was an echo already in my mind. Mm-hmm. So you just confirmed it. Yeah. And I, I was thinking. I am putting putting his business in jeopardy because what you said, like, Our how business. can you help the business when you can't even help me? But the yeah. thing is, you you did try a lot of times. I just was reluctant. Yeah. And you would pay trainers for me. You would offer to train me. Jordy offered to train me. Big John. And I would show up maybe for a week, if One, that. Once a month. All right, then. All right, come correct. Come correct. <laughs> And, you know, I, and yeah, and, you know, I, I did, you know, it, it's so crazy because, like, you were feeling this way, and then I was feeling, like, damn, like, did I let my girl down? Like, did I leave her in the dust? And, like, no. maybe she, that, well, I'm just talking about how I feel. Mm-hmm. This is my feelings. My feelings are valid, Francine. Okay? I have the right to have feelings. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyways, I was thinking, like, damn, I let my girlfriend down? Like, did I go too far ahead? Like, I was trying to think, but I'm like, no, at the end of the day, like, I was still, in, I'm, I'm still in that selfish mode. We all know that. I'm, but selfish is not a bad thing. No. You know, because look what us getting selfish did. Uh, well, and, you're and selfish that, uh, to bring people along after. Or, or well, or well, at the same time, I, if I'm making money, you're making money. If I'm losing weight, I want you to lose weight. If but no, even I'm growing, just with the, the Arate thing you're going to do next week, you were already thinking, I need to make sure I take notes because yeah. I want to make sure I bring it back to Big John, to you, to Dove, to whoever, whoever wants to get this knowledge. I'll pay for it, and I'm going to pay it forward. I'm going to pay it forward. No, because at the end of the day, 
you, you, people hear this all the time, right? It just sounds so cheesy, but I generally mean this. I care about my people. Mm-hmm. I want people to win. I want, I remember mine and Brianna's and Mike's and, and, and Hector's and, you know, Raymond and so many other different people. I remember our conversations. I want them to win. I want them to know that I care, that I support them. And those are all names from my online coaching um, program. And Jason. And Jason. Yeah, all of them. There's so many more, right? Yeah. Harold. You know what I mean? There's so many more people. You know what I mean? And that I just, I just want people to win. So if I could go and drop, this is a lot of money that I'm spending. <laughs> the most I've ever spent to go somewhere, but I'm, I, it's going to be worth it. And also too, um, sidetracking. Um, David Goggins is going to be there. That's awesome. So I get to see three heavy hitters for the price of one. So I'm, I'm happy. Um, so is that like and the no, I didn't hit like up. Rihanna for me? You make me sick. Yes, I guess Francine. Oh, and damn, they are cool. the epit- epitome of Rihanna, Francine. Okay. Um, that's major. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Honestly, I can't. I can't take you serious sometimes. Um, but yeah, get into it. That conversation was difficult. And what did you do right after? Um, I got my. Oh, wait, no, sorry, sorry. Hold on. Actually, before I want to cut you off. Uh huh. I told you after that conversation, we had an amazing conversation. We talked for four four hours. hours. We were talking, we were laughing. And like, because I didn't want it to end bad, and nor did I want it to be bad. Well, I think I just had other like channels of communication that we were lacking. And I feel if anyone is listening and is in a relationship or wants a relationship to continue to be strong or wants it to be stronger, communication is key. Mm -hmm. I tell her everything, maybe stuff that I shouldn't tell. Yeah, I tell you and it's never disrespectful stuff. It's just like kind of guy talk when I kind of like tell you and you get a little annoyed. But at the same time, at least you probably respect me more for like saying out loud than just like because your big thing is I'll never forget this. You never want anyone to know something about our relationship that you don't know. Mm -mm. And I I respect our relationship. I respect So I tell you everything. Um, But I do think if how you said about communication with your significant other is really, really important. But what's even more important than that is making sure that you deliver the message properly. Yeah, no, yeah, it's it's it, and I learned that from you. I've actually learned that from you because, like you said before, I was very cutthroat, and something you said to me a long time ago, years and years ago, and, and if it, it resonated with me, and, and it always will, and I feel it's helped me change uh, to better myself as a person. Is not what you say, it's how you say it, mm-hmm. right? And I, that's helped me with even online coaching. Yeah, I could tell someone that they're messing up and they're gaining weight. Or I can explain to them how they're messing up and help help them learn find what they're solution. doing wrong and find a solution. That's that's a big thing I've learned from you that I'm like, okay, it's not how you say it. Because they delivery. both mean the same thing. It's a delivery. Mm-hmm. And then after that conversation, I told you, I was like, I'm not bringing this up again. You I will not it. bother you again about weight loss. I will not bother you about going to the gym. I will not bother you about if you're eating clean. And I did it. And that's very hard for me to do because I wanted to see you win so bad. But I knew this had to be for you or we were not going to work. Mm-hmm. And I fell back. I fell back for five months, six months. Yeah, until we had that conversation coming back from California. Well, but before that, I was already noticing the differences. I was already noticing your meal prepping for yourself. But the first month. Your yoga. Yeah, no, but like after our conversation in Oh, it September, took five months. Um, the first like week or two is when oh, I yeah. took it serious, I don't count that. right? No, that was like but the But then it's stage. like I fell off again. Yeah. And then uh, once we actually moved here, December, not really December, I'll say January. You December, is when me really was January. <laughs> No, no, you, you, about a month, about a month uh, into the movie, no, but like about, I would say a month, I started noticing making little different, different changes in Orange County, mm-hmm. but the biggest changes were in, Here. in, in Vegas. Um, and I started noticing little things and I was like, oh damn, I'm still not saying nothing. You were going to yoga by yourself. You're doing yoga every day, hot yoga, Pilates. I was like, oh man, like this is like awesome. I was so proud of you. And I, I didn't want to bring it up because I told you I wouldn't bring it up. So I'm not going to bring it up to make you go. I'm also not going to bring it up to force you to keep going. Mm-hmm. I wanted this to be for you. And if it wasn't for you, then obviously, you know. We'd have to, you would have to break the lease and go back to Kelly. You can leave. No, nah, it's my, it's my place. house. My house. Every, my house. <laughs> my couch. No, but it's our stuff. But no. Anyways, so and you, I noticed the changes made. So like, and then we were. I remember I I was so I was beyond proud of this to hear Francine to to hear your loved one say this is a really good feeling, and I hope everyone gets to feel this, and everyone out there that is listening uh, that has a loved one who is not following on that pace right now. And whatever it is, whatever it is, it doesn't loss. have to be weight loss. It could be in business. It could be a mindset. You know, obviously have that conversation with them. Let them know how you're feeling because if you're feeling like this in five months, you're gonna feel like that in five years, and it's just gonna build up over time. And it's something that I had to talk to you about because, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, you know me, I'm a five year person. 
are we, what are we doing now? Can I deal with this in five years? And if I can't, then I got to nip it in the butt. Yeah. And it goes both ways. You know, we have a very open relationship when it comes to talking with each other. And I, I'm not one-sided. Um, sometimes I want to be one-sided, but I've learned that no, that's but not a relationship you, works. Sometimes you are, but you tell me, I'm going to be one-sided right now. I'm going to say oh, yeah, for sure. blah, blah, blah. Especially like when you go on vacations with certain people, I don't let you do that. Just because it's not safe. And I, you say you're having a girl's trip. I'm part of the girls too. So Why? Because you're a feminist? Yes, I am. But I'm going to Greece with the girls. Me too. But you're not a girl. D- don't gender profile me. Oh my god. Don't don't do that. You can ask me my pronouns. You need. <laughs> <laughs> that's rude. Okay, okay, that's what we're doing now. That you you're gonna get canceled so fast. I'm uh-huh. so tired of you. I'm here for it. Yeah. Anyways, getting back into the last part of it, mm-hmm. and we're driving up into Vegas, and you you know out of nowhere we're watching. We love watching our TV. We love traveling. We love. Yeah, we love and when I mean traveling, anywhere. not only just traveling, flying places. But I'm talking about we will we will drive. We love to drive from California to Vegas. We love to drive to Laughlin five Together hour drives. Alone. Together alone. We got our TV point. We have the um, little thing that plugs into the truck that turns the dash into a TV. Netflix. And we watch Netflix. And we just enjoy that. We vibe out. We talk. Or we'll, murder we, mysteries. Or murder. I love murder mysteries. Not really music. Um, no, not really music. I don't do the music thing anymore. Only when I'm in the gym. I do podcasts, murder mysteries, something that's going to either bring knowledge or, 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 or make me, like, teach me something. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were having, we out of nowhere, you're like, hey, babe, you know, um, after we had Chipotle, which was, and that was funny. That was a funny trip. The Chipotle thing. That girl it's was not crazy. My not my problem. It's Chipotle's problem. problem. Um, she looked at me. She's like, babe, she's like, you know, I'm actually losing weight for myself. And it feels so good. And I looked at her with like a big ass cheeky smile. What do they say in that the, the magazine card article? Mm-hmm. A toothy smile. Toothy smile. And I was like, now your life is going to change. Mm-hmm. Because it's for you. Like you're the has. why. And it has, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm not even talking about the benefits to our relationship since we had that conversation. How much has your life changed since you started devoting yourself to you? A lot. I've tried to make sure I prioritize time for me, which means time for the gym. But and time it management. Also, yeah, it also um, made me find out what was going to work for me because kind of how I said before that you offered trainers to me, Jordy, Big John, everyone would try to help me, but it wasn't. Was not your me. time? Yet it wasn't for you yet. It was more, and it, was it wasn't for us. tailored to me. And you don't. But, that's the th- but I know it's also like an excuse. But when I found yoga and I tried that, it made me love that process. Yeah, and let's not forget your eating. Your your eating was the biggest thing. Nutrition is number one. Not yoga. Not anything is your eating. And yeah. that was the the big changes that you started meal prepping for yourself and stuff like that, which I absolutely loved and I love to see it. But at the same time, like ever since that conversation. You lost 20 pounds. We've only been here since January. Mm-hmm. You've lost 20 pounds. And I don't even, we don't even talk about gym stuff anymore. Like you have your own fitness journey. But it doesn't feel hard this time. Because it, well, yeah, because it's for you. Like that whole three, three years I was working before you joined on or two years, whatever it was, I mm-hmm. was before you. It wasn't hard for me because I it was for me. Mm-hmm. I loved you, but I got something to do. Yeah. Right? I love hanging out with my friends, but I don't got time right now. Like it was for me, and that's why I said your life is gonna change. Like I love having your attention. I don't care what any guy out there says. Like, oh yeah, macho man, but but I'm little spoon, and I am proud. Right? I'm little spoon. I'm proud, and I enjoy that. I love your attention. But I told you that you got to do this for you, and if that means pushing me to the side or stuff I need to do, or me have to do more stuff around the house. Let me be it. I'll, let me know. I'll do my part. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And now it's for you. Like there's no stopping you now. Like literally, you're no you're. You change mentally. You change now physically even more. You change financially. Like you're and you're more. You're no. It's something. The biggest. The biggest thing I love about your whole change for yourself is your how you're positive now. Yeah. Because you were so negative. I hated when you're so negative, and I feel like you were just so negative because that's just how you're brought up and like that's That's your mindset. But you are nothing like that anymore. I always tell you all the time. You and Andy are nothing how you should be for mm-hmm. the way you're raised. I actually talked with Lizette about this two days ago. Yeah, because we Lizette's Francine's cousin. Yeah, she, she sent me this uh, n- video on Instagram of this um, thing that said that I forgot the the verbiage, but pretty much saying that uh, people that go through trauma as a kid. Um, as adults, they become the person that they needed when they were little. Oh, I seen that too. Like I showed like right after that clip, it was like it was like a, a girl text. crying. Like like five. I seen like twenty people crying. Yeah. So I got the video a long time. But no, that's true. And like you're becoming the person that you want to be. And like yeah, we and still have a lot of growing to do. 
I learned to not only see my point of view as being right. Yeah. Because perspectives are all going to be different. That was also a tough one in a relationship because you were just, you did not apologize for nothing. That used to bother me so much. I mean, it still takes me a bit. It does. <laughs> you like, you, you, when you apologize, you're like, sorry. You, like, you say, sorry. Sorry. You don't mean to like, open your mouth. You're like, sorry. <laughs> but, you know, now that you're doing it for yourself and now that you, you're, you are your own why, which I love your attention, but I'm so happy you, I'm not your why. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy because I want you to be happy. You deserve to be happy. You, mm-hmm. you worked your ass off to be happy. Everyone that's listening to this conversation, like, how good is it now to, for you to be your own why? Because you have, remember what I said earlier. You're going to you, make me cry again. You have to be your own why in order to help other people. Yeah. Well, go ahead and cry. We get a lot of views. You have the most viewed podcast. That's why I got you on here. I don't have Let it out. waterproof mascara. I'm going to be like that horrible <laughs> mom that was like making her kid cry to, to, to get like a, a thumbnail. Yeah. No, but no, you don't have to cry. But no, like, let it, like tell them, like, let's end off. With, with some inspiration, like how good is it now that you are your own why? It feels amazing because my happiness doesn't like we're rely on views. someone else. We're going to get the views. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, my happiness, like I don't, it's, it's not dependent on someone else. Yeah, and that's where we're talking about that she doesn't need me and I don't need her. We want each other and we want each other in life. But at the end of the day, like, and you I need your kid. Got to do. Damn. Yeah, I'm down. Down. I might be shooting blanks. I don't know. We got to go get checked out. Uh-huh. I be. We. That's another conversation. We've been trying to have a kid since 2018, mm-hmm. right? 2018. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had to look at that. <laughs> okay. Maybe we won't forget people's birthdays when I have it right here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but you know, being overweight messed up your body. We have so many conversations mm-hmm. to have about this. We we have a lot more. But I am happy we talked about it today because I had had a few DMs, but what really made me want to talk about it was because i've talked to a couple people about with online coaching yeah well the male and female will that that they'll tell me that they really want to lose weight but their significant other is either discouraging them or not helping or being in their way and they would tell me like how do you guys keep each other motivated and i and i come clean i'm like girl i'm your boyfriend in this situation i I hear you a couple in the office talking about that you know okay so there's a couple things i want i want to talk about before we end this, okay? So if you're out there listening and you're about to start a weight loss journey, you've already started a weight loss journey and you feel that your other half is not supporting you and they're not they're not changing their life because of you, it's not up to them to change their life because of you. And that's something that you need to know. They didn't sign up for this healthy lifestyle. Now, should they? 100%. But what we should and what they're doing are two different things and you have to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. You know, moving into that, you should never let anyone's, you know, self-doubt, anyone's, you know, choice of living affect you the way you want to live. Our insecurities. You know, you have to get out there and you got to do this for yourself. You need to get out there and become your own why. If you are seeing something in the mirror that you don't like and you want to start changing, not that you don't love yourself, but if you see something that you don't like and you want to start changing, whether the person you next to you supports you or not, you need to push forward. And if that person doesn't support you in the way that you need to be supported, then you still need to push it. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter if they're if they're not willing to go on a walk with you, you go for a walk. It doesn't matter if they're not willing to cook healthy with you, you cook for yourself to go healthy. But if you, they're sabotaging you, ditch them. Then ditch them. Oh, you got to yeah. go. You got to go. <laughs> Bye. Adios. Adios, amiga or amigo. You know, and that's it. But at the end of the day, it's not up to the, your, your, your loved one to change your life because of you. But it is good for you to start changing your life for yourself. And you're going to have to have uncomfortable conversation, especially if you feel like you're not getting the, the support or you're not getting uh, what you need out of that relationship anymore. People are going to change over time. And I would have to be okay with me changing one way and her changing another way. Now I'm happy that it ended up working out and you're hearing a story that it did work out. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of, there's a lot of relationships that didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Maybe it didn't work out because they just weren't meant to be. Maybe it didn't work out because they didn't have communication. Maybe it didn't work out because the other person was like, Hey, I'm about to go drive myself. So, you know, I'm about to drive some new, whatever it might be. Right. I'll knock you out. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you have to have those uncomfortable conversations because I had to talk with Francine because I still was my why. Mm-hmm. Now, I want you there next to me, right by my side. I want you to be my double Y, but my I want you to be, I want you to be my double Y, not my double wide. Oh, <laughs> shit. You're to- no, your trophy truck? I wanted to be, no, I, I, yeah, I, that was a good one. That was a good one. I wanted, I wanted to be double Y's, not double wides. That's uh, a, damn, that's a good. Damn, that's a good one. I'm going to, I'm going to, I want, I want that clip. Um, <laughs> I won't be the one editing, so don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, and you have to have those uncomfortable conversations and let me having that most uncomfortable conversation with the person who I love the most next to my mom, my grandma. Sorry, 
I love you, my sister. They got that too. You know, the gang got so there is a level. See, I there told is, you. No, I had to put them in there too because then if they hear this and y'all mad. No, but I'm cool if they come before. There's me. no levels. It's just you're all there. But I just had to put no, my there theirs. No, there's levels because you I had to put the theirs. Had to I had to put the theirs. But I will say, don't call me I, out. I don't mind it. Oh, whatever. I don't want to hear it. I know you, you can't <laughs> mind it. Duh. I'm not allowed to. You're not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that those uncomfortable conversations have worked uh, wonders for our relationship? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm happy that I did have that conversation. And I'm happy that you took the route that you took, and I'm happy that like you're your own why now. I'm happy that you don't need me. I'm happy that you're not doing this for me. Yeah. I'm happy that you're actually doing it for yourself. And I'm excited to see what the next couple months or years bring. I'm excited to see with your all your work done. Same, but you're gonna look crazy. I haven't like, told you bad. this, but I'm, I mentioned it, but starting monday you know new like new year new me you, you and big john start, yeah. diet starts monday i i'm starting 75 hard you do 75 hard mm-hmm. you're savage i'll oh uh, you're i won't do that again i so am I'm gonna I, I know i have to too. follow a diet so i'm just gonna follow my macros but i'm not gonna commit to gluten dairy free because we have the ebook stuff and i don't want to take a bite of something and i have to restart or you could do that and not take a bite of anything and have to restart well, I, i'm not gonna it's not meant to be easy not it's not 75 t- soft francine oh. 75 hard I didn't get ask together. your opinion. Well, I'm just telling you. Well, I'm telling I'm you friends what with I'm Andy. doing. I'm friends with Andy, and he told me it's not 75 soft. Yeah, I was texting him earlier. I didn't ask him either. He made the. He made it. And I'm doing it. 75. If I'll let everyone know <laughs> she's doing 75 soft, I'm going to call her out so fast because I finished 75 hard. No, yeah, I'll I be honest. Even, yeah, I know you would. I didn't post it because I could have did better. I, I, I And that's something about me that I would never want to change. When I, when I like to be true to myself, and I know I want to change that. And I don't want to change a relationship. I'm so happy. I'm so happy we have this conversation. Hopefully this brings a lot of value to everyone listening because it is a difficult thing to be in a relationship and kind of start changing your mindset and not know what the other person's going to be. Now, like I'm saying, you're listening to a podcast that is two people that have had this conversation and end up working out really good. But um, I don't think that we're, we have a special situation. I think. We just have communication. Yeah. And I, and I was open for you to be like, well, later, dude. And I'll have to show my abs off to the next one. Shut up. What do you think? Well, how, where do you think we'd be if, like, we would have broke up because of that? I think I would have lost more weight, low key. Mm, I don't know. Just to prove you wrong. Just to prove me wrong? Yeah. Then we'll break up for a couple months and then I'll send you, like, a love letter. I still flowers. need a business card. Damn. <laughs> um, I don't know where. I don't like to think of like that anymore. Like, I don't, I, we joke around, but, like, the actual thing about it, I feel it opens up the door to, like, breaking up. But, and the most part, I think you would probably be doing, you would probably take over like the, the food business, the food side of it, everything. Just and, one of them. And then I would, I would just still be happy to modify to just, I don't know. We were still working with each other. I don't know. But that's going to be awkward for your new boyfriend to like, well, tell him that you and your ex have a real businesses together and you have to travel. We get separate beds, separate hotel rooms. I already told you if we break up, I'm not dating. Okay. That's even better. Then we can still work with each other and not to worry about anyone else being all weird I'm not saying it. I'm going to be celibate. I'm going to be a hoe. But. Damn. I'm not gonna get in a relationship. Good. I don't want to. Well, that that would be weird if we're you're in a relationship and we're still running business together. I don't know though he'll take that. So it's good. It's good. And you wouldn't be allowed to bring anyone around me. No, I respect you. Good. The, the at, at the end of the day, if you look at it this this way, the people that had nothing and built a relationship from there are still together. Ti tiny. Was it? Oh, but they're into like threesomes and stuff. Oh, all right. Um, You're very traditional. I'm very traditional. I'm old school. It's weird. And it's like, once you like do something like that, like I can't look at you the same. <laughs> like, don't look at don't me. Don't look at me. Like, don't look. But anyways, we're going off topic. I'm glad that we had the conversation. No, I, I, I really know this is going to bring value to a lot of people. Let and me know if you got triggered. I, 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 yeah, yeah. Let us know wherever you're watching this from, whatever platform you're watching it from. One, like it on whatever platform. Leave a comment on any platform. And let us know, it, whether it be in the comments or it be, you know, a DM or something. I want to know if someone's people get triggered or if not, they would enjoy, enjoy this conversation because it's that uncomfortable conversation that mm-hmm. we had to be okay with. Um, end up working out for the better, but I was also open to it going the um, complete other way, but I'm happy the way it went. And because it went the way we are, we're sitting here having a podcast on Heavy to Modify Podcast with your host, Anthony Lopez. And co-host I'm part Modify of the crew because I set everything up. You did. Yo, shout out to you. Honestly... It's it's honestly me. Why are scaring me? You no, know, you got it. You hooked up everything. You, I'm so proud of you. Like you hooked up the whole podcast stuff. 
You're now start. You're about to hold the camera. We're about to make this chicken, uh, chicken uh, video. This <laughs> chicken video. Gonna eat that for dinner. We're gonna make the ch uh, chicken sandwich video for our online clients right now. Like, I'm so proud of you and the the effort you put in to just be amazing. You know, you're gonna get like a solid five hundred dollar ring. Honestly, I'm gonna give you the biggest five hundred dollar ring you'll ever get. We're not doing five hundred, but I do Damn. want to. I try to easy that. You hear that? The I try to get that. that in. I do not want a real diamond. I want a lab diamond. Because I don't need the pressure. Oh, because you don't want to lose it? Yeah. What if I get you like a real diamond, but then we no. get like a, a fake one? Like you only wear it like it's, going out. It's like a waste. Well, you know, like, you know, a lot of people do that, right? Yeah. They have like real Louis bags and they're like cost like five, 10, 20,000, but they take the fake one out just in case someone tries mm -hmm. to steal it. So what if you did something like that? We'll figure it out. No, I'm going to get you a solid like $455 ring. I'm, you don't have to give me shit, <laughs> low key. Embarrassing. Uh, all right, everyone. I do need an thank upgrade. you. Yeah, you do. We'll get you one soon. All right, everyone. Hopefully, this brought value to you. Thank you for listening yeah. to Modify Your Life podcast with your host Anthony Lopez and my now co-host, co-ho ho, Frankie from the block. Frankie from the block, modified Frankie on Instagram. Uh, no, honestly, everyone, thank you so much. I, I don't know what is this number nine? Is this podcast number nine? I don't know. Or ten? I don't know what it is. But thank you so much for you viewing. Thank you so much for listening. And I know this brought value to someone out there. And, and if you want to come on the podcast. Send us an email to um, heavy to modified business. No, no, modify your life podcast. Oh yeah, modify your life. Do, podcast you're the one told me not email. to mix up all the emails, and now you're over giving know. out the, all the emails. Look at you. So yeah, send us an email. Let us know why your you want to come on. A little backstory, and then we might have you come out. We are located in Lo oh, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Nevada. We're about 11 miles from the strip, so you can still get hey, a weekend in Vegas. Show up, show out. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. I'm proud of you. Good one. You know what? You Don't need to only now. wear your hats backwards because it gets gets the juices flowing. For oh, me. gotta go. All this happened for myself and my family. There's no way that this is real, man. It can't be.